Before we get into this video, I want to let you guys know that it's sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing learning platform by creatives for creatives that's all about spreading your creative talents. And I absolutely love Skillshare. It's one of my favorite websites. You'll notice that this video has some new branding and things, and I learned that through some of the things that I learned on Skillshare, and I can't wait to share it with you guys right now. There are so many really great lessons on there, like Thomas Frank's productivity class, and I really think but if you're interested in getting better as a creative, I think you should definitely check out Skillshare. Skillshare was nice enough to give the first 1,000 of you guys to click on the link in the description box a free trial of Skillshare. So if you're interested, please check it out. Anyway, let's get right into this episode. So can we talk about something? Not too long ago, I downloaded this application for my browser called Shigami Eyes. It is a thing that you can install for your browser that detects accounts on Twitter and other websites that are trans friendly or anti-trans. If it is pro-trans, it is marked in green. And if it is anti-trans, AKA known to engage in transphobia, it is marked with red. I'm the sort of person who likes to sort of have conversations on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, you already know this about me. So it, it saves me a lot of time, which is why I like it. And so I randomly decided to look up an old friend <laughs> just to see what their situation is looking like. And let me show you what came up when I looked up my old friend, Ariel Scarcella. So as you can see, <laughs> Ariel Scarcella's channel is marked with red. <laughs> so clearly she is known for engaging in transphobic discourse. Forever ago, I had a little bit of an interaction with Ariel Scarcella. And the, th the funny thing looking back on that now is that back then when I was first starting to have these conversations with Ariel Scarcella about whether or not she is or isn't transphobic, people were still questioning that. People were still wondering whether or not she um, was transphobic or not. And to be honest with you guys, a lot of the stuff that she was talking about was kind of in that gray area. So a lot of the way that I approached her was with this sort of understanding and belief that, you know, maybe she just doesn't know any better, right? Maybe she just doesn't know. When making a video about trans guys, it's probably a good idea to listen to the opinions of trans guys and not ridicule them for correcting you on your terminology. If you cared for them, you'd actually listen to them because that's what an ally does. Fast forward today, um, I've not watched one of her videos in a really, 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 really long time. But the other day when I looked her up to see how the Shigami Eyes extension interacted with her, her page, um, there were just like nonstop, like obviously transphobic videos. But you know what? I've learned that we can't judge videos on, you know, their title. So I wanted to take a look at some of these videos. Um, but before that, I wanted to just be real with you guys about my own personal experience with Ariel Scarcella. I try to, 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 to think about where people are coming from, okay? That's that's kind of my big thing when I, whenever I talk about stuff, I really try hard to understand where someone is coming from. And if I'm being honest with you guys, and this is just me, I have nothing <laughs> going either way for this, and maybe there's some people who are gonna hate me for saying this. Um, I felt sort of bad for Ariel whenever I was around her because I think she had some sort of collaboration channel forever ago and every, you know, who's who and what's what of LGBTQIA plus YouTube was on uh, her channel. There was a lot of people who just like straight up like didn't like her, but were tolerating her. I feel bad when I observe shit like that because I would hate to be in that position. Now, I've never talked about this because it's kind of a messy story, but let me just give you a bit of a an insight into a situation I had with her that to this day, like baffles my fucking mind, especially considering where she is right now. So forever ago, there was um, what I would call the fire fest of... LGBTQIA plus conventions that happened. Oh my God, here are all of my, <laughs> these are all of my convention. Um, oh my God, it's right here, right here. All of my convention bags. So 2016, we had this convention called PrideCon. This convention never ended up actually happening, but basically there were a bunch of LGBTQIA plus, you know, creators from around the world who had come to 
<laughs> go, go to this convention that never ended up actually happening. In conjunction with that, people were trying to collaborate and come together. And, and there's this house in the Hollywood Hills um, called The Castle. It is a, a place where a lot of people shoot videos and things. And a bunch of us had um, been invited to some sort of thing up there. Now, I did not know this at the time, but the, th the thing that was happening in the castle that day was actually a um, promotional shoot for Ariel Scarcella. Um, I would have not come to this if I knew that, but honestly, there are a lot of people from out of town who I wanted to interact with. So I, I went and had a, a, a relatively good time. She shot her, her ad or whatever, and then everyone else was shooting videos. And at some point somebody did a, um, wanted to do a blind, um, it was like a blind kissing test where like you would put blindfolds on and you would kiss them. I forget if it was on the lips or if it was on the cheeks or whatever. Um, but it was an intimate thing. So she'd asked me to be in this video, long story short. And I said, no, um, low key, cause I just don't want to kiss girls. I mean, let's just, I'm just to be fucking honest. I didn't want to kiss women. I don't know. <laughs> I know I just, that's kind of where that's, it is what it is. I don't want to kiss women, but like she really wanted me to be in this video. And I think that she thought the way that it, she kind of framed it to me is it would be kind of like a way for both of our fan bases, I guess, to see that like we were, um, cool with each other. But my thing is this, we weren't cool with each other. So like, I wasn't gonna like fake the funk. And I'm really glad that I didn't because like fast forward to where we are now, I would absolutely hate to have footage of me out there somewhere kissing Ariel Scarcella. I've never been as invested in other creators as other people are, you know what I mean? The people that I've gotten along with have just been the people that I've gotten along with, you know what I mean? Um, she's very clearly a calculating person and there were several relationships that I had with other people um, that pissed her off because she saw that we were friends. And I'm just never invested in that degree of politics. I know that a lot of my issue with Ariel has been that I have never been a person who has like bowed down to her in the way that other creators have, because there are some people who I know who are friends, who were friends with her, who I know don't like her, who yes, she could say she helped out. She could be like, yes, you know, forever ago, I put her in a video, I got her on. She couldn't say that about me. So I had like no reason to like, have allegiance towards her. I just saw her as a person who wanted to get into mess. And to me, when I say that because to me, it all, it all feels quite deliberate. The observation that I have of where she probably is now, and this is an assumption, I'm probably wrong. I think that like, given what things were, I can understand where she, why she went in this direction because she was not liked by anybody. You know what I mean? Um, and meanwhile, you know, while she was dipping her toes into some transphobic stuff, there were a bunch of people from that crew who were like, yes, please continue to talk about this. Please continue to support this, please. You know what I mean? So she got support from that group of people and didn't really get the same support from, you know, people who are quote on my side, you know, the tribalism bullshit. And so I kind of see where, why she went where she went. I believed that there was a possibility that 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 she could just be she could just be, just be misled. You know what I mean? Where things are now, I don't think that's the case. Which is why I was curious to check out her stuffs. So I'm on her page, <laughs> and there are so many so many videos, so many so many so many videos. She is really good at keeping her videos short. That is something that I admire because I know this video will not be short. Does she even have that big of a following? Yes, she still has, she has 696,000 subscribers. Now for context, I think the last time I was like actively looking at her channel, she had a, um, like a little over 200,000. And I remember thinking that was a lot. So she's definitely like grown in subscribers <laughs> since. And this video has over 100,000 views, you know? So even though I haven't been paying attention to her, clearly people have been, and her channel is still doing quite well. This video is called Lesbians Are Sexual Racists for Not Sucking Dick, LMFAO Gross. 
So I'm very curious about this because for my podcast, I recently decided to have a call-in show for the topic of trans women taking over lesbian spaces. I'm not a lesbian, so I wanted to extend the call-in to some people who are. So that's what that is. If you guys want to check it out, you can find it on all podcasting platforms. It's called True Tea with Cat Black, and I will try to link the YouTube version of that conversation in the comment box of this video. But for now, um, I wanted to play this video and sort of see how I feel, because this is, this is shit I don't know nothing about. Hi, I'm Arielle. I am a lesbian and I am a sexual racist. I can't believe I <laughs> that on camera. I'm a sexual racist. I swear, I'm if I've learned racist. anything over the past three years from the left, it's to not underestimate their craziness. I mean, this is just insane. Okay, the trans lobby group Stonewall, which is a not-for-profit, by the way, in the UK, brands lesbians as sexual racists for raising concerns about being pressured into having sex with trans women who still have male genitalia. I don't see anything wrong here. I mean, wait, <laughs> this, I'm just going to start right away with looking up sexual rate racist because this doesn't sound true. <laughs> sexual racist Stonewall UK. S side note, sexual racism is a term already. It's a term that people use to discuss um, racial preferences um, with, with dating and things. Where are they getting this information? Because all I'm seeing when I look up sexual racist are people saying that that Stonewall did this? If you're if you want to like make the argument someone's making a claim, it should be pretty easy to find someone making that claim. But maybe maybe it's um maybe I need to see the context. So let's get back to this video, I guess. I'm a lesbian. I don't like dick. Dick is no. No for dick. Dick, no. Let's read this article for those of you who don't know. Like I said, uh, Stonewall originally started as a not for profit that campaigned for the rights of gays and lesbians. So it's kind of funny how it just like turned its head on us over the years. For many, it was a brave and long overdue airing of an important and distressing subject, a painstaking investigation into claims that predatory trans women have been pressuring lesbians for sex, which, yeah, for those who followed me over the past two years, um, we know that this is nothing new. This has been a pushed ideology for at least the last five years, I would say. It's finally making its way, thank God, into mainstream headlines. Finally, people are caring about lesbians. Just, I mean, it only took five years, it's okay. But a leaked email shows that the influential trans lobby group Stonewall attempted to suppress the investigation before it had even been published and made the extraordinary claim that debating the issues was equivalent to sexual racism. So now, not only am I transphobic, and some people call me racist or bigoted or biphobic, like, not only am I all those things, but I'm also a sexual racist. Racist. Is the is the source for this label sexual racist this one BBC article claiming that someone said it? I don't know. The article, the way that they're saying it's equivalent to sexual race racism. So there's many ways of interpreting that. There's creating a new buzzword, as Ariel says, or there's understanding rejection of trans people to be similar to rejection of people of color, which is discussed under the description of sexual racism. If, if I were to be very generous and give them um, maybe a bit of space, what might have happened is somebody was comparing not being attracted to a trans person with not being attracted to a person of color. And so what they might have been doing is saying that this type of rejection is, is similar to sexual racism. They weren't so much as describing rejecting a trans person as sexual racism. They were s saying that this type of rejection, you know, because every time we have this conversation, we have this conversation about, well, rejecting a trans person is just like rejecting a black person and da 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 da. And because both of those conversations have the common theme of, well, you have to sit and, and, and understand and process the ways in which society has influenced you to not like this and not like that. I think that's maybe what was happening. I, I think I just solved that case. I don't think that that's what was actually said. You know, part of me coming through, coming up with all of that is a little annoyed because I'm like, oh shit, did I just think about this in a deeper way <laughs> than, than she did? When I watch people who have like gone on in, in this direction with their content, to me, it's just so, it's, you watch it and it's just so easy. All you have to do is pull up an article with um, an upsetting title in which there are so many of them these days. And you just sit there and for the next like 10 minutes, you just keep saying the same thing over and over again. You throw in a couple of buzzwords, talk about how, how bad wokeism is. Stonewall, yes, 
Hi, yeah. I I'm just calling to tell you that being pressured or forced into sex is rape. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Bye. So I've said this many times, and I know that this is a position that some people don't agree with me on, but I'm just going to say it. Um, I don't personally believe that anyone's transphobic for not wanting to sleep with a trans person. And I also think that some people's tendency to want to turn this conversation sharply into, well, I think you should consider, you know, how you've been socialized to only see this and that. Like some people just like this and some people just like that. I really don't like how some people treat someone not wanting to have sex with them as like the hill that they must die on. Because to me, just to be honest with you guys, I've never ever been in a situation where people haven't wanted to fuck me. So I just, I just think it's a waste of time to even begin having a weird conversation with someone about how someone needs to sort of unlearn their shit in order to be open to having sex with them. Because who cares? If you don't want to sleep with a trans person, I think that's fine. If you're a lesbian who defines yourself by your lack of interest in penis, I think that's incredibly fucking valid. Amen. Power to your sister. You know what I mean? My issue comes with this conversation. I think that some people want to define other people's sexualities by the way that they define their own. Um, and while, she, you know, Ariel is somebody who is a lesbian who does not have sex with trans women. There are some who do, you know, um, there are some who do. And I think that the problem becomes when people are like, oh no, if you're open to having sex with a trans person, you're this, this, and that. You're no longer that, that, and this. Because I think sexuality is something that's incredibly personal. I think that it's incredibly individualized and it's about who you're attracted to, not how other people feel about your attractions. Do you know what I mean? Came two weeks after the corporation published an investigation by journalist Carolyn Lowbridge in which some lesbians told them how they felt pressured into having sexual relationships with trans women, specifically men who say that they are women but have retained their male genitals. I wouldn't call them men, I would just say trans women. Trans women that have retained their male genitals. It's factual and it's true, but it's also just not calling trans women men. The investigation cited three lesbian women who said that they feared three lesbian women, that's nothing. I can show you hundreds and thousands of people, but okay. Who said they feared being labeled transphobic and risked being shunned and threatened by the gay and trans community if they refused to take trans women as partners. Like I said, I've been making videos about this for at least four years. Look at this video. This is the first video I made on this topic, which was over three years ago with Blair White. The lesbians that they interviewed told Lowbridge that they felt a bizarre form of pressure to accept the idea that a penis can be a female sex organ. Penis can be a female sex organ. Suck the dick, bigot! I wonder what my neighbors think. They just hear me screaming things like that out once in a while while I'm filming. I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna... I'm just... See, I mean... Ugh. I mean, part of the thing that, that makes this conversation <laughs> aggravating is I don't think there's anyone actually saying suck the dick bigot. Um, if there are, tell me who those people are and let's, let's, let's listen to them. I think the most that people are, and this is where, and I disagree with this. I think the most people are saying is you should, you know, think about your attractions and, and can question, you know, whether or not your rejection of trans people comes from a transphobic place, which for me, I understand how that could be translated into pressure. <laughs> I, I do, because for me, when people have that conversation, it's clear that the only conclusion they want to reach is um, one that says that trans women are attractive, one that includes transgender women in the list of attractions. So I don't love that, and I can see how that feels like pressure, and I could also understand how, how people, especially women, could feel like putting up that boundary is like, you know, something they shouldn't do because they don't want to be called transphobic. Now it has emerged months before the article appeared, Stonewall's chief executive, Nancy Kelly, wrote to the editorial director to denounce the work in an apparent attempt to get her piece stopped. So BBC was obviously not happy about this and countered the, the uh, article that Lowbridge wrote. In her email, Kelly suggested that the BBC article, here it goes, would end up being transphobic because it represented trans women as sexual predators, which was a central anti-trans argument. It is. Listen, yeah. just because trans people are bull right now, well, these specific trans people are full of right now, doesn't mean that it's transphobic to call out supposed bull 
right now. She further complained that the highly toxic cotton ceiling issue was analogous to issues like sexual racism. An open letter from Trans Activism UK had 20,000 signatures and described the article as incredibly dangerous for suggesting the issue of lesbians being coerced into sex with trans women was widespread. Yeah, it is. We, we literally have the receipts. Go to turfisaslur.com. I will put it in the description. Uh, do I have to go to turfisaslur.com? <laughs> All right, so. All right. I'm just very curious about all these things. Okay, turf. It, I punch turfs with a bloody shirt, all right? Turfs can choke. So I hate shit like this. Like, I know why people say this shit. I get it, but like, it's not helping. <laughs> like, this shit doesn't look great. There's, I think they just go around and they, they capture like people saying, Be nice. Ooh. It's it's a bunch of like trans people saying some variation of suck my dick. I'm going to end this video with a quick tweet from my friend Stephen Kent. I was on his show and I was in D.C. a few days ago. I'll also have that link below for you guys if you want to go and check it out. We talk about all the current bullshit. Truly amazing how this anti-patriarchal inclusivity movement is ending in a push to grant biological men, that's technically what they are, sex with whatever partners they desire lesbians to be damned that's where we're at what a shame i don't even know anymore if you guys enjoyed my criticism in this see okay so here's what i'm trying to piece together so the pose that we just looked at okay disagree with all of them none of them from what i read could be wrong um are sort of making this argument that lesbians need to suck their dick or else none of them are good and i'm not defending it but none of these None of those posts are really making that argument. They're saying turfs fuck off. They're saying turfs suck my girl dick, but they're not saying if you don't if you don't suck my dick, you're transphobic. I don't know if that's a thing I should be pointing out right now, but that's not what I saw at least. Uh, I don't know. After much deliberation, I decided that I would actually cut this video into two parts. I actually recorded this two hour long live stream on my Twitch. If you guys are interested in catching me when I'm filming these videos, please follow me over on Twitch. But for now, I will see you guys later this week with the second part of this conversation around Ariel Scarcella's newest videos. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about one of her videos that she made about autogynephilia, which is a topic that a lot of you guys have asked me to discuss several Several times on this channel. That video is a bit longer than this entire one, so I figured it would be more effective to have two videos instead of one very, very long video. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments in the comment section below. And on that note, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for checking in. Bye.